Hello everyone, I'm Ubersui and today I'll show you 20 different crate mod trains. That was just 16 of the 20 trains and shortly we'll be taking a closer look at all 20 of them. And at the end of the video I'll also be showing you how to build a train. Now let's start off by taking a look at some of the trains that I've created. The first train we'll look at is called the Grand Tour. This is a train that's been featured in one of my previous videos. On the inside I have some basic seats along with pistons with trapdoors on top of them to serve as tables. This train only uses vanilla and crate mod blocks, and all the information on how to get the schematics for all the different trains will be in the description below. I would also like to mention that this was filmed on our creative server where we do a lot of testing and stuff. So a lot of the things you see here might be outdated or it's currently being planned for the SMP server. Almost all of these trains were built using Ubersuite's tech pack, which is a mod pack that I created. I will go ahead and link that in the description below. Next, we have my Cobble and Goods steam locomotive. This train has two portable storage interfaces to carry any kind of goods. Of course, it's definitely made for cobblestone, but you could put any kind of items inside of it. I've used an add-on called Create Things in MISC for the trapdoors, but otherwise it's pretty much just Create Blocks and Vanilla Blocks. I also want to give credit to Big Swedish for first showing this style of locomotive to me. It's something that's been pretty standard on the server. This next train is one of my favorites. It's called the TNT train. And I made this for one of the players on our SMP server called Doris. My goal was to capture his personality with this train, and I think it turned out pretty good. The yellow concrete is from the chip mod, and the tiny TNT is from Applied Energetics 2. Next we have my dual cargo train. This train is able to carry both liquids and items. One thing I really like about this train is that the portable storage interface and the portable liquid interface are both stacked on top of each other. This is because interfaces can reach between one to two blocks and they can actually overlap. And I thought that was pretty cool. Next, we have one of the passenger steam locomotives that I created. The front of the locomotive is a bit shorter than my other trains, and the uh, interior has a bit of a different style because I use Scoria instead of the normal deep slate that I use. But otherwise, it's pretty much standard to how I usually design my trains.
Next up, we have one of my logging trains. Here, I ended up using shafts combined with wooden brackets to kind of hold the wood logs in place. It's another train that I featured in a previous video, but I thought I would include it in this video as well. Next, we have my nether train. This train was featured at the end of my video of 100 different things you can do with the create mod. I think this was actually one of the first decent trains that I made completely on my own. Although, it does take a lot of inspiration from the locomotive that Big Swedish has designed. Next, we're going to take a look at my train called Flower Power. This is another train that I created to try to match someone's personality. On the inside, you can see we have some moss carpet, some azalea bushes, and some glowberries. Now, I wasn't able to plant azalea bushes without having dirt blocks. If anyone knows the way around that, please do leave me a comment. The bright purple color that you see is from Applied Energetics 2. I also used some crimson planks and trapdoors from the chip mod. Next, we have a modern passenger train made by Big Swedish. The blue and yellow you see is concrete with different variations from the chip mod. Next we have The Bus by Ingrid. This train makes use of several different mods from Uber Swiss Tech Pack, a lot of use of the chip mod for example. I also believe it's the first train that makes use of Create Deco. Next, we have the Mega Croc train by Big Swedish. I believe this is the largest train we have on the server that transports passengers. It's a fairly large steam engine train that can go in two directions. It also features trap doors as tables that can be flipped down when nobody's sitting at the table.
Next up, we have a diesel cargo train created by Big Swedish. This was the first cargo train we had on our server with a more modern look. Here's a steam lava train created by Big Swedish. I believe Big Swedish made this after he saw how painful it was to look at my first lava train that I made. If you're interested in checking that out, check my video on how to build a lava train station. Next, we have the Peculiar Ink Train made by Prince and Blackie. And I thought it was a really unique and interesting way to design a steam locomotive. On the inside, it's fairly decorated with lecterns that holds books and tables that have pots on them. All the blocks used for this train are available in Uber Suisse Mod Pack, and I'll make sure to link to that in the description below. This is one of our newest trains, and it's going to be really nice to see this driving around on our SMP server. Next we have a diesel train created by Herobrine. This train and every train after this one were shared on the showcase section of my discord. And that's where you'll find all of the schematics for the rest of the trains in this video. Here's another variation from Herobrine called the Royal Explorer. Next, we have a diesel electric locomotive by Mighty Dedane. Another train from Mighty the Dane is the prototype ML2200. Next, we have a train created by the Water Drop. This is a Hogwarts inspired train that also features a sleeping carriage.
and that's all 20 trains. And as I said before, all the schematics for all these trains are in the description below. Now, let me show you how to build a train. So first steps, let's take our station and put it into assembly mode. Once you've done that, you'll see a little blue area on the track like this. And that's where we can place a train casing. Now the train I'm going to build is a locomotive with three boogies like this. And we can go ahead and use our wrench to change the type of buggy like so. Then I'm going to get started with the base of the train. I personally prefer polished deep slate, but you could use any kind of block here. I like to use upside down stairs on the back of the train to add a little bit of shape. And on the side of the train, I like to vary between slabs and stairs. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put a block right here because later we'll put some stairs here so we can get up on top of the train. And now we'll keep going with our slabs and then some stairs where there's no wheels. And then slab again above the small wheel. And then after that, we'll go back to stairs again. Now here at the front, I'm going to go ahead and use some full blocks. And then I'll finish the opposite side in the same way. And our base is done. I'm now going to go ahead and put some brass ladders on either side of the train. And then it's time to glue our base. So since we have three boogies, we have to be a little bit careful about how we glue. This is because we don't want to glue together more than two boogies. So what I'm doing here is I'm gluing the back boogies together, but I'm going to leave the front boogie by itself. So we want to make sure that we don't glue these two blocks right here, because that's connected to that boogie. But we want to glue everything else, and that's what I've done now. So as you can see, everything except for this part right here is glued, because that's where the front boogie is, so we want to avoid that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put down some crushing wheels. This will give our train some shape and will look like the tank of the train. So I just put down five of them like so. Then I'm going to put some red valves in the front and also a placard to look like a light. Now for the accent of this train, I'm going to use dark oak and I'm just going to put some slabs here next to the crushing wheels. Remember that the crushing wheels only take up one block of space, but they extend outwards. Then on either side, I'm going to put some dark oak stairs like so. Then we put two fluid tanks on top of each other. This will become a boiler when we put a whistle on it. And you don't actually have to heat this to make the whistle blow. It will blow as soon as it approaches the station automatically. Next, I'm going to raise the platforms in my workshop to make it a little bit easier to work on the train. Here I'm placing trap doors on either side. These function as very skinny walls to the train. I really like this look for trains that are three wide. And what I mean by three wide is that they take up three solid blocks in space. And then they also have some partial blocks like trapdoors on the outside. There's also other designs that use five wide trains, but personally, I don't like that. For the glass of the train, I'm using some frame glass trapdoors. Then I'm using brass casings to add some accents. And now we can go ahead and place our train doors on either side of the train like so. And by shift clicking over the ladder, you can actually place the train door on the outside, sort of. I also placed a train door in the back along with some shafts and metal brackets. I really like to add this to make the train look less flat. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove the trap doors that block the brass casing. Now we're gonna go ahead and build the roof of the train. So I use solid blocks in the back and then I'm gonna use some stairs. This is so that I have more headroom when I'm standing up inside the cabin. Once all the stairs are put down, I'm going to use some slabs to fill the top of the roof. Now it's important that these slabs are actually connected to a solid block, otherwise you won't be able to glue them together. You'll have the same issue with trapdoors. Here in the back I'm going to use some stairs to add some more contours to the roof, and then a solid block in the middle here. Now we can go ahead and add two train controls. I prefer to have two because you can have one mob who's controlling the train and also a seat for myself. And that makes it easy for me to take over the control if I need to. 
I prefer to use blaze burners instead of mobs because they're more reliable and they don't disappear. And the final step now is to glue our train. So we still need to make sure that we're not gluing the front buggy, but we have to make sure that everything else is glued. If you don't glue everything, either your train will not assemble or you're going to have missing pieces that stay in the air as your train leaves. If you happen to have missing pieces, you can always drive your train back to the station by holding space. And as the train is parked, you can then go to the station, disassemble your train, and then put the pieces back again. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of different pieces to glue, and I'm going in and out of the train just to make sure that everything is attached. These trap doors are especially tricky, so as you can see here, I need to glue the outs of the train like so. You also want to make sure you're not gluing any external objects. Once you've done that, you can click assemble, hop in a seat, and grab the controls. And if you did everything right, you should not be able to move your train with the WASD keys, and hopefully there should be no pieces left over. And that's how you make a train. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time.